video games. <laughs> you know, you can't come to a video event without talking about video games. Video games. Tegra um, really started this whole uh, movement around uh, really, really rich games, even for mobile devices. We created the store called TegraZone, which allows us to curate great games and make them, pot, make them available in an organized way and present it to game, gamers all over. Every single game has been optimized. Every single game has been tested rigorously so that when you download it, it just works. Whether it's Tegra 3 or Tegra 4 or Tegra 2, it just works. Our engineers have worked with the developers to take full advantage of the, of the platform, and our engineers have worked with the developers to fully test it across all of the various devices that we're shipping. We go through great pains so that we could help gamers enjoy the games at its full capability and also to help the game developers realize their imagination as the best, best possible way. TegraZone has been downloaded six million times. Six million times. We're so, just so proud of it. And um, uh, to Tegra, TegraZone is to Tegra what GFE is to GeForce. That's one way to think about it. And so uh, with that, let me uh, introduce uh, a new game that, that we've never seen before, and um, uh, take it away, please. Thank you for that. Wow. I guess the dead, space, dead trigger two. Dead trigger two. I guess that metal underwear didn't, didn't help. Um, so so uh, dead trigger two. Thank you very much for that. Uh, we're going to save a few. G give me a moment, okay? Give me a moment. I'm going to save a few for you. But let me finish Tegra 4. Uh, there's something that happened about 18 months ago. We met a company that was working on this really, really cool technology. And, and it really connected with us because we were, um, you know that we've been in the computer graphics industry for 20 years, our company has, and many of us have worked on com computer graphics much longer than that. And we came up through the world of accelerators. A chip was dedicated to one function. It's got all these acceleration techniques necessary to perform the functionality of a very rigorous pipeline of things that you have to do to ultimately to turn a three-dimensional graphics con uh, command into pixels on a screen. The OpenGL pipeline was very well documented. It was very rigorous. And we built accelerators to stream out and pump out these beautiful pixels from 3D commands. Over the years, we realized that in order for us to take computer graphics further, we had to make the GPU programmable. And the reason for that is because the artists, the game developers, can't be constrained to a singular way of doing something. They need an, an, a nearly infinite palette to express their artistic um, imaginations. And so we created this idea called the GPU. The programmable shader was invented. And we've, we've seen the revolution that happened when we were able to move from a fixed function accelerator model to a programmable model. The revolution was really, really clear. But that programmable shader wasn't just a normal microprocessor. It had to be invented in such a way that achieved the performance of a fixed function pipeline, but the programmability and the flexibility of a processor. And it took us several generations, really, to make that successful. 18 months ago, we were getting involved in the wireless industry, and we met this company that had seen the same things that we saw in our industry and made a bold move 
to jump from accelerator fixed function approaches to modem technology to a programmable approach to modem technology. Now, this, this technology is called software-defined radio, SDR. And it's been talked about for decades, frankly. However, it has never been achieved successfully. When we met this company 18 months ago, they were the world's first commercially shipping SDR modem, and they were shipping in 3G. They were shipping in 3G. We got so excited about their approach. We got so excited about their team. And we decided to buy this company called Isera. Isera, 18 months ago, became NVIDIA. And starting this month, we are going to be sampling our first modem. It's called the i500. The i500 is an elegant processor. It has eight modem processors in it. These processors are programmable. And they run the entire modem stack, 3G stack, 4G stack, the, the, the Viterbi decoder, the turbo decoders, all the inter interference algorithms. It runs all of the software necessary to deliver the modem. And it does it in a programmable way. There are eight processors inside, each of them, each of them 160 giga ops, and eight of them together delivers over 1.2 trillion operations per second. 1.2 trillion operations per second. Now, just to put that in perspective, this little tiny chip, this little tiny chip, it's a modem, remember, this little tiny chip is doing 1.2 sustained trillion operations per second. That's 200 trillion. This little chip is 1.2. Now, of course, the mathematics that it does is very specific to wireless communications. But nonetheless, it's a programmable processor, 1.2 trillion operations per second. If we had to use a general purpose microprocessor to do that, my guess is that our estimate, your fastest, highest performance, six core, core i7, running a couple of hundred watts, couldn't even do it. So we were so excited about this technology. And this month, we are going to be sampling the i500 modem part of Tegra 4. I'm just incredibly excited about that. Now, just to illustrate the benefits of a software-defined radio or this software modem technology, compare it to the state-of-the-art LTE modem. It is so much smaller. And the reason for that, the reason for that is this architecture was, this programmable architecture was designed for modem technology. And because it, it, it's able to reuse, reuse, each one of the processors for every stage of the pipeline, it doesn't have to replicate these fixed function blocks. Frankly, if NVIDIA today, if our industry in graphics was still using fixed function processors, in order for us to deliver the type of visual quality that we're seeing today, the chips would be many times larger as well. We were so enamored with this technology, we took the chance and I am incredibly proud and um, gratified to say that we are now sampling a 4G modem based on this very technology. Let's give those guys a round of applause. Now, the benefits of this modem being small is one thing. However, don't forget, because it's a software modem, it could achieve things that a fixed function modem cannot. As you know, the world is not all the same. And every single city, every single area we're in, has different capabilities for connectivity. When you're in New York City, you're trying to figure out how to reconstruct all of the beams, cellular beams, into a signal that one phone can handle. On the other hand, if you're, if you're in, in the Great Plains of America, you're so far away from a cell tower, you're not trying to do beam forming. There's only one beam. It's coming from about 50 miles away. You're trying to figure out how to extract this little tiny possible signal from the background noise that's always there. And so these different environments allows 
for it requires different types of algorithms for optimization. The benefit of this SDR just has the benefit of GPUs. There are, th there are different things you can do that aren't possible if it was fixed function. SDR allows us to download into the processors algorithms that are optimized for different areas of, um, of interference. And we could also improve it over time. And just like software uh, downloaded on your phone, we could use over-the-air updates to uh, upgrade your phone. So software-defined radio, the software modem technology, really, really exciting. And so that's Tegra 4. That's Tegra 4. 72 GPU cores, the world's first quad-core A15, the energy sipping core, the 4 plus 1 architecture, still has the prism technology that adjust the backlight dynamically on every single frame in hardware to conserve energy. And then also, finally, also our first 4G LTE modem, Tegra 4. Well, I've got a little bit of time left, and I'd like to talk to you about something new, something I hope you're surprised by. If you're not surprised, I'm going to be surprised. Something new. You know, <clears throat> gamers today, gamers today play games on every platform. They play games on consoles. They play games on PCs. They play games on phones. They play games on tablets. Next generation gamers play literally everywhere they can, whenever they can. Just like we enjoy movies on multiple screens, just like we listen to music on multiple devices. There are two ecosystems that are growing incredibly fast. The Windows ecosystem, the Windows gaming platform, because of all the things that we talked about, the incredible pace of technology, the rich graphics that the technology affords, the open platform, and therefore the innovative new business models like free to play, and because the gamers themselves are on a platform where they can make contributions to the gaming experience, they are innovating too. The other platform, Android, the fastest operating system growth in the history of mankind. Hundreds of millions of people have Android devices. There are millions and millions of Android gamers, and the games are getting better than ever. Our feeling is, that the PC games and the Android games will continue to flourish. But there's a way for us to help these gamers enjoy games even better. And that as a company, we are really the only company in the world who has the processor technology, the system software technology, and the dedication to these two platforms and the gamers within it to go build devices that can allow us to enjoy games in a very different way, in a very, very different way. Yeah.